In this video, we're going to learn about friend functions in C++. Friend functions are special functions which are given access to the protected and private members of a class. So for example, if we have a class called my class, this class could have protected and private member variables. So for example, we'll have a private member variable x. The class can also have protected and private member functions. We'll have a member function called add. And the add function is going to accept an integer n as an argument, and it's going to add n to the x member variable. We'll also make a public constructor. So we'll say here public my class, and the constructor is going to accept a value for x, and it's going to set the member variable x to that value. We'll make one more public member function. This one will just output x. We'll say void print and print is just going to output x. We'll say c out x colon output x followed by an end line. Now what we'll do is try to make an instance of this class. We'll say my class, my object, and maybe seven. Now we can call my object dot print just fine because the print member function is public. So if we save this and run it, we'll get x colon seven. But if we try to call the add member function here that's private, we'll get an error. So here if we say my object dot add and we pass in the argument 10, if we save this and run it, we get the error here. Add is a private member of my class. So we can't normally access the private member functions and private member variables outside of the class definition, like we do here with X. So the class is able to access these, but not the outside world. Now, friend functions are a special type of function that we're allowed to create in C++. And friend functions are allowed to access the protected and private members of instances of a class. So for example, let's make a friend function to double the value of X for objects of my class. So up here, we're going to say friend void double x my class and object. So this friend keyword here is letting my class know that we're going to define a function called double x. It's going to be a void function, so it's not going to have any return value. And it's going to be given a reference to an object instance of type my class. Now we would call this the declaration of the function. We still need to define the function. Now this function will not be a member function of objects of type my class. It's just declared in this class. Notice how it's declared outside of the private and public access modifiers. That's because double X is not going to be a member function of objects of type my class. So we'll provide a definition of the function down here. We'll copy this, paste it here, and we'll actually take out the friend keyword. The friend keyword goes in the declaration, but not in the definition here. Then here we'll say object dot x times equals two. So what we're going to do is take the x member variable of this object instance. We're going to multiply it by two and we're going to assign the result back to the X member variable of this object instance. Now let's try to use this friend function. So down here, if we try to call the friend function like this, my object dot double X, and then my object here, it's not going to work. We'll get an error because here we're trying to use double X as if it's a member function of my object here, which is an instance of my class. But, Double X is not a member function of objects of type my class. It's a function that we can just call like this, double underscore X, and we'll pass in my object. And because we've declared it as a friend function within the definition of my class, double X is able to access the protected and private members of my object here. Let's try to call the print member function of my object after having run double X. 
We'll save this and run it. And now we get x colon 14. So we've successfully doubled the x member variable of my object using this friend function, even though x is a private member variable of objects of type my class. Now, in addition to being able to access the private member variables of an object, a friend function can also access the private member functions of an object. So for example, here, we could store the current x value of this object into a variable. We could call the add member function of this object using the current x value. And what we're doing here is basically adding x to x using this private member function, which will also have the effect of doubling x. But now we're doing it using this private member function. So if we save this and run it, we'll also get x colon 14. So that's the benefit of a friend function. We can access and use the protected and private members of a class with a function that's not a member of that class. Now a friend function can actually be a friend to multiple classes. And this is actually an important use case of friend functions because we can look at the protected and private members of multiple classes and do things like compare them. So for example, let's make a class for representing revenue. It's gonna be a real simple class. We'll have a single private member variable called revenue, and that's gonna represent revenue. We'll have a public constructor, and the constructor will set the revenue member variable to the int argument that it's provided. And that'll be a basic revenue class. We'll make another class for representing costs. So here we'll say class costs. And it's gonna be very much the same. We'll say private int costs, and then we'll have a public constructor. So we'll say public costs int costs, and we'll set the costs member variable to the int argument provided to the constructor. Now we have two classes for representing revenue and costs. And let's say we'd like to compare revenue and costs to see if there's been a profit. So for example, we'd like to have a function like this, bool profit. And this function will look at a revenue object and a cost object and return true if there's been a profit. In other words, if revenue is greater than cost and false if there has not been a profit. So we'll say here, if rev.revenue is greater than cost.cost, .cost, we're going to return true. Otherwise, we're going to return false. So now this profit function here needs access to the private members of both revenue and costs. So what we'll do is declare it as a friend function in both classes. So up here in revenue, we'll paste it in here and we'll put friend at the front. Now, because revenue is using the cost class in this friend function declaration before costs has either been declared or defined, we're gonna to have to have a forward declaration of costs. So that way we're telling revenue essentially that there is a class called costs. And yes, you can declare a friend function called profit that's going to use that class. And we call this a forward declaration. We'll copy and paste this and we'll also put it inside the class costs as well. Now let's try to use this friend function of both classes. So down here, let's make a revenue object with a revenue of, let's say 1000. We'll also make a cost object with costs of let's say 500. Now we'll use the profit function. We'll say if profit returns true for this revenue object and this cost object, we're gonna output profit followed by an end line. Otherwise, we're gonna output no profit followed by an end line. And if we save this and run it, we get profit because revenue is greater than costs. 
Let's change it so revenue is less than cost. We'll say 500 and 1000. We'll save it and run it. And now we get no profit. And now we have this profit function that's a friend to both revenue and costs. We can actually change where the friend function declaration is, and it's not going to affect it. So for example, we could take this here and put it underneath private. We'll take this here and we'll put this one underneath public. And if we save and run a program, it's going to run exactly as before. This won't affect the correctness of the program. And that's because these friend function declarations, they're not making the friend function a member function of the class such that the access modifier is going to affect it. So we can put it underneath public, private. I prefer though to keep it at the top of the class. That's just my own preference though. Now, notably a friend function can be a member function of another class. So we'll make profit a member function of revenue and then we'll have costs declare it as a friend function. So we'll delete friend here and we'll also delete the parameter revenue here. And we're going to make profit a member function of revenue. Then in costs, we'll declare that this is a friend function. So here we'll say revenue colon colon profit because profit is a member function of revenue. Then we can define the function down here. We'll say revenue colon colon profit. We'll delete the parameter here. And now because it's a member function, we can just access the revenue member variable directly. So we'll delete this as well. Then down here, to use the function, we'll have to say revenue dot profit costs. And if we save this and run it, we'll get no profit. If we change it to 1000 and 500, we're back to profit. So we can also have friend functions that are member functions of another class. So friend functions are useful in situations where we would like a function to have access to the protected and private members of a class. But for some reason, we don't want that function to be a member of that class. Sometimes friend functions are useful in situations where we want to access the private and protected members of multiple classes at the same time. Friend functions can also be useful in operator overloading. And I'll make another video on that topic. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.